there was a long time where everyone's extra deck was at least 10 rank 4 monsters. This went from the inception of Xyz monsters all the way through Link monsters, and that's a lot of years and a lot of events where people's extra deck are mostly just these rank 4s. Why were rank 4s so popular? Well, they're so popular because no matter what you're trying to do in Yu-Gi-Oh, whether or not it's advance your own game state or break your opponent's board, there's almost always a rank 4 monster that can do that job well. You can use cards like Diamond Direwolf and number 101 Silent Honor Arc to destroy your opponent's cards or steal them, and you can even use cards like Gigant X to set up your own plays, and there are so many archetype specific rank 4 monsters that are just really, really powerful. There was a long period in Yu-Gi-Oh where everyone was playing some sort of rank 4 strategy, and even though we're a little bit past that now with just everyone's extra deck being Link Summons, they still have secured their spot in Yu-Gi-Oh's history as some of the easiest to summon monsters that provide a ton of utility, which really helped a lot of rogue strategies and competitive strategies alike use these excellent effects in a variety of different ways. This matters because it means that anytime a new rank 4 monster is revealed, it is compared against every other previously released rank 4 monster. So if there's a monster that's like Diamond Direwolf but also requires you to discard a card or maybe has more specific summoning requirements, many players are just going to say, well, why would I ever use this instead of Diamond Direwolf? Case in point, when Castell the Skyblaster Musketeer came out, most people stopped playing number 101 Silent Honor Arc. Both cards are incredibly similar, and Silent Honor Arc does have a bonus effect, but Castell doesn't have to target attack position monsters, so it ended up being a little bit more versatile, and when extra deck space is tight, people are going to go with the better card in the widest variety of situations, so Castell sort of took over as the go-to spot removal for rank 4 Xyz monsters. I mention this because in today's video, as the title would suggest, we are talking about Zodiacs. Now, in hindsight, we know that Zodiacs are one of the strongest decks ever released and the most consistent deck in the game's history. Zodiacs have like an 85% chance when they are full power to open their normal combo, and that is much, much higher than even decks like Skyspikers that we usually think of being very, very consistent. The sheer number of ways that Zodiacs had to get into that starting combo, which was incredible incredibly powerful back then is just off the charts. And I talk about that and I mention that in today's video because these Zodiac monsters, when they were first revealed and first leaked, when we first got people posting combo videos to YouTube, people weren't that hyped for them. I mean, they were hyped for them a little bit, but a lot of the comments on the older Zodiac videos that I found, and these are actually before the archetype was called Zodiac, you have some pretty funny things in hindsight. So for example, one of them says, so you use half your extra deck each turn to make weak monsters which are not worth it. Hmm, tier one deck for sure. And then another comment that says, as this deck is a weaker glass cannon than ABC. These are the sort of comments that you'll see pretty much anytime a new archetype is revealed. But in the case of Zodiax, it really goes to show that people weren't really understanding just how consistent and how good these Zodiac Xyz monsters were. Because in the case of these Zodiac Xyz monsters, many of them are just alternate versions of rank four monsters that we've already seen. So in in a direct one-to-one -one comparison, people weren't really understanding how they were good. For example, one of the better Zodiac monsters, Zodiac Broad Bowl, is basically just an alternate version of Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King, because both of them, I mean Tiger King has one extra step, it sets a tanky, but both of them just search out a Beast Warrior monster and they're both rank 4s. And the same thing with Zodiac Dryden, which is obviously one of the best Zodiac Xyz monsters, if not the best Zodiac Xyz monster, on paper for a lot of people they just saw it as a quick play version of Diamond Direwolf. And comments like the ones that we just looked at are pretty funny now that we know that Zodiacs are one of the best archetypes ever released in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I don't completely fault people for miscalculating how good these Zodiac monsters are because once again, on paper, when you look at Broad Bull and Tiger King, they don't look that different, but there are two big areas that players initially missed when they were reviewing the Zodiac monsters. The first area that a lot of people miss is that when the Zodiac these monsters are being special summoned almost 100% of the time they are being special summoned by only using one material because they're allowed to do that. All the Zodiac monsters have the exact same effect as Xyz monsters where you can just put them on top of one zoo monster instead of using two. This is a big difference because when we look at Tiger King you already have to have two monsters on the board. That might not seem like a big difference but you have to sort of go out of your way to do that. You need a bonus effect. It's not just as easy as summoning 
in one monster, you need to have something like Tensu or you need to stall for a turn or something along those lines, which makes cards like Broad Bull just on paper when we compare them to Tiger King, as long as you're using Zodiac monsters, it makes Broad Bull a lot better. But the other difference and one that a lot of people miss is that when you look at these Zodiac monsters and you compare them to other rank fours, you can't really do that without taking into consideration all of the Zodiac Xyz monsters that you're summoning because all it takes is one Zodiac monster on the field. Just one singular Zodiac monster is all it takes to summon every single Zodiac Xyz monster right in a row. And that's a huge difference because when you're comparing these Zodiac Xyz monsters to other rank fours, you're not just comparing Broad Bull and Tiger King, you're comparing every single Zodiac monster to that Tiger King. And then the comparison doesn't look as even because when you compare those types of things, you not only have the Broad Bull effect, but you also have the Tiger Mortar effect and you also have the Dryden that you're ending on. Now that comparison looks pretty lopsided. And then you have to factor in Zodiac Rap here, which when you use Zodiac Rap here to make these Zodiac Xyz monsters, now you're getting free special summons along the way as well. So it's not that you're just comparing the Broad Bull to the Tiger King, you're now comparing Tiger King to a rank four monster that only takes one monster to summon and also it special summons two cards from the deck and has the quick effect to pop a card on top of the effect to search a card. Now that comparison looks horrible and this is sort of why Zodiacs were so powerful but even on paper is that good enough for people to realize yes these cards are super powerful. If the Zodiac cards weren't that good like the, the actual main deck ones weren't that good maybe they wouldn't have been so successful but Rap here was really good and then you have a million other ways to get to this combo. Fire Formation Tanky, Terror Top, Zodiac Barrage, all these cards in your deck that means that every single turn you can get that combo off and oh by the way the two monsters that you summon from your deck are level four which means you can summon Digusto Emerald and now you can do that combo every single turn. Anytime you're playing against Zodiacs as a non-Zodiac player, you are spending real resources to make your extra deck monsters. This is before Link summoning, so sort of keep that in mind when we're talking about zoo monsters. You're using real resources. You're spending two monsters to make your Xyz monsters. Your opponent is not only not spending two monsters to make their extra deck cards, but they're also making a extra deck monster that has the combined effects of like half of your extra deck. That is a really tough time for many decks to deal with, not to mention that the fact that you can do it every single turn. If it was just a glass cannon, if it just did this on the first turn, maybe Zodiax wouldn't be so good. But the thing you have to keep remembering here is that the Broad Bull can search cards that you then can normal summon the next turn and then do that every single turn. If we think of full power Zodiax, you basically had to have three interruptions every single turn. You had to stop the Terror Top, you had to stop the Barrage, and you had to stop the Normal Summon. Most decks didn't have enough cards to actually deal with that many cards that your opponent is comboing off with so pretty much in every single case your opponent would eventually get to the setup with Dryden and you searched a thousand cards and you drew a card with the emerald any single time you played Zodiac they're almost always going to hit that unless they happen to brick which once again is almost uh, impossible just because you have an 80 percent chance of opening one of the cards in your deck that gets you to that combo and all of this is fine and all of this is true but you might still be asking but Doug why are you talking about this a year after after Zodiacs have been in the metagame at all. The reason I'm talking about this is to sort of expand on the idea of that video they did a long time ago about service level analysis, and that's that when you look at cards, you can't just look at cards individually, you have to look at the deck that they go on. This is another thing that I've talked about in a video titled How to Actually Review Yu-Gi-Oh Cards, where I sort of talked about the steps that I use when I look at cards, but I felt like it was worth using a real life comparison on how sometimes when you look at individual cards, it doesn't actually turn out all right because in the case of the Zodiac monsters the reason they were under hyped when they were first getting revealed and eventually people figure out some crazy combos but a lot of the times the reasons that they were under hyped or people didn't think they were quite good enough is because they weren't looking at the full picture they were just doing one-to-one -one comparisons an example of this that's a little bit different from the Zodiac monsters is the layer of darkness strategy in the case of the Zodiacs many of the one-to-one -one comparisons didn't look so good because there were other rank fours 
that did what the Zodiac monsters did on paper, but it wasn't until you actually put these Zodiac monsters in a deck that you realized how powerful they were. In the case of Layer of Darkness, it's kind of the opposite because the one-to-one -one comparisons between Layer of Darkness and other similarly styled decks out there made Layer of Darkness look really favorable, which is why it was so overhyped. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to get across to you guys whenever you're deck building to sort of keep in mind Zodiacs and Layer of Darkness, just sort of look at not individual cards necessarily. Even if a card is individually worse than another card, if it has internal synergy with the deck you're playing, maybe in that deck's context, it is now a lot better than the card that you were comparing it to. Zodiac Dryden as just a normal rank 4 monster would have been extremely, extremely powerful, but would it have been as dominant as it was in the actual Zodiac strategy? Probably not, because one of the things that made Dryden so powerful was that you were also getting a search, you were also getting special summons, you were also buffing its attack with Whiptail. All these sort of things come together to make a coherent strategy, and that's what I want you guys to pay attention to when you're building your own decks. Anyway though, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.